these ones, no mycorrhizal inoculant. These ones with mycorrhizal inoculant, they've been growing for the same amount of time. Hello there good people. Today is March 14th. It's been kind of rainy this morning and it's a little bit chilly. But I figured I'd go ahead and bring you on with me out to the garden and have a look and see how everything's growing. Come along. Here's a pea that I planted on February 11th. It's actually an entire row of them here. couple more. This goes on for about 48 feet. When I planted those peas the soil temperature was about 40 degrees and 40 degrees is not really a great temperature for pea germination so there are a lot of empty spaces. Here is here's the pear tree. I planted just about a week or two ago. Let's come up here and have a look. Right there. Starting to put on some buds. Here's February 15th. This row here is starting to come up. There's some more. That's a sweet gum seed ball. Moving ahead another week. Here we have February 22nd, and this is an entire row that have all germinated. About this point, the soil temperature was about 50 degrees, and you'll notice this, the germination rate is pretty close to 100%. There's another row, nearly 100% germination rate. This was, once again, February 22nd. Over here we have around the 1st of March. There's one coming up here. They're just barely starting to pop up. I only planted one row that week. And then just recently, they haven't come up yet. Oh, I've got a couple that need to be covered back up. It rained pretty hard. And those are going to need a little bit of mulch. This is just earlier this week, two rows. All right, enough of the peas. I'm gonna have a lot of peas. Let's have a look at some trees over here real quick. Oh, what am I stepping on? Got some Egyptian walking onions here. Quite a few of them. I haven't got around to mulching this area, but over here, these, are all Egyptian walking onions spaced about six inches apart to give them plenty of space and there are 48 in that patch in a little walkway and another 48 there this is a hazelnut tree just planted this winter this one is a Jefferson Jefferson cultivar. Here's another hazelnut starting to put on leaves. And this one is Yamhill hazelnut. Yamhill will help to cross pollinate the Jefferson. This one's starting to bud out. It's another hazelnut, but this one is the Etta hazelnut which also will help to cross-pollinate the other two cultivars of hazelnut that I've got growing. This is not onions, this is garlic. I planted this around the 15th of December. Very, very late. And I planted them by starting to sprout them indoors 
and then after they had started to sprout, I brought them out and put them in the ground. Some of them I put a little bit too deeply and they did not prosper. Live and you learn. Here is another Jefferson. It's not labeled at the moment. I'm just having to make do with a mnemonic device. Jefferson at a yam hill. I'll get around to labeling those here in a little bit. What do we have here? Oh, this is more garlic. Uh, these are exactly the same same variety of garlic, uh, California soft neck, that were planted in the previous bed. These are spaced about three inches apart in a hugel culture mound. That's some daffodils popping up. Ooh, look at there. These little tiny green leaves are on an Eliagnus multiflora gummy fruit or cherry silverberry. It's related to the autumn olive. I am really excited to have that growing. Back to the garlic. At this point here I switched my spacing from three inches apart to four inches apart. Still in the Hugel culture mound. Went from three inches to four inches. I'm going to experiment and see how much better the bulbs are between 3 inch spacing and 4 inch spacing. That's a Bradford pear tree. We don't care about that. Alright, let's come back around to the greenhouse to see what's happening there. Quick word on the greenhouse. I have cattle panels as my support structure. They're tied together with twine. <laughs> Cheap, right? These are our recycled cattle panels. They were part of a fencing project that never got completed. Um, wound up not needing them, so I wound up using them in here. A little bit of duct tape. That's about it. All right, what do we have here? These are four inch pots containing cumin. This is what cumin looks like when it's very, very young, and these are planted close together. This is the first year that I've planted cumin and tried to grow it and I don't know how well we're going to do but uh, I'm giving it a shot. I'm using an underwatering system consisting of good old turkey roasting pans. I got them for two for a dollar which is a lot cheaper than the plastic trays that you can get from the garden, garden center. These are landrace basil, sweet basil. They were grown from seeds I harvested from a basil plant that volunteered last year. Interestingly enough, these ones, no mycorrhizal inoculant. These ones with mycorrhizal inoculant, they've been growing for the same amount of time. Let that one sink in. These are nasturtiums. They're a Tom Thumb variety, which means they won't get much bigger than this. They'll just sprawl out across the ground and produce little orange and yellow flowers whenever they start to flower up here in the next few months. I have quite a few of them. The plan is to interplant these with these. These are pepper plants. This one is... What is that? <laughs> just some schmutz. These are cayenne pepper, the hot pepper. These will be going out in the front yard area, front garden. I don't really have a yard anymore. These ones are sweet red peppers. And these will be in the backyard, back garden. Here I have some tomato plants that I've gotten started quite a few tomato plants. These ones are called Carmelo. Very popular in the farmers markets in France, or so I'm told. I didn't get them because the French like them. I got them because they're an indeterminate tomato. Indeterminate meaning they're going to keep on growing until the frost kills them, and they'll keep on producing tomatoes until the frost kills them, which will be a long, long time from now. And in between now and then, they're going to turn out hundreds upon hundreds of these eight ounce fruits, perfectly balanced between sweetness and acidity. 
or so I'm told. Carmelo tomato. Over here, I've got ginger. I'm growing ginger. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's a little one coming up there. Seven so far. Seven little sprouts coming off of the ginger roots. There's one right there that I've got planted in this little tub. That may yet turn into another shoot there if I leave it covered. Well, okay, good people, that's a, good, a quick tour of the garden and the greenhouse. I hope you enjoyed it. I don't have a whole lot of time. I've got a whole lot of things I need to get done today. So, I'll catch you next time. Thank you.